In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Today's gospel lesson is a good one, and I want to put it into context for us. Today's lesson comes from Mark, the very first chapter of Mark. This is the beginning of Mark's story about Jesus. Now, Mark, his gospel hits the ground running. He doesn't have a lot of fluffy things like shepherds and wise men. He just goes. And for Mark, Jesus' ministry starts off right after a word from John the Baptist. Jesus shows up to be baptized, is sent immediately into the wilderness to be tempted, and then he shows up here in Capernaum. Now, this gospel story is super short, and it's important because for Mark, this is the first public moment of Jesus' ministry. Now, before today's ministry, Mark tells the story of Jesus walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee and calling two pairs of brothers— Simon and Andrew, and James and John. So at this point in the story, Jesus has called just a few of his disciples, and then he shows up and begins teaching the crowd. And Mark says Jesus becomes very popular, but this crowd teaching takes a little turn away from the stuff that we might like the most. Today's gospel lesson is really about teaching and healing. So we're going to take the teaching first. So we like Jesus' teaching right? We like what Jesus says. We typically like Jesus expounding upon the law and trying to clarify the way God works in the world. And just as he does today, Jesus' teaching is very effective and begins to draw the crowds to him. But right after that teaching moment, we flip into a healing moment. But it's not the kind of healing moment that we're used to, right? It's not the blind can see or the lame can walk or the lepers are healed or something like that. This first healing in Mark's gospel is an exorcism. Ooh, did you feel that? <laughs> we don't necessarily like this kind of stuff, right? We don't like the demon talk. And especially in this scene, what happens is that the demons see Jesus. Did you catch what they said? What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? That's an incredible little moment. These demons, this evil that is real, recognizes Jesus, recognizes something powerful and authoritative in Jesus, and Jesus says, you get out of him. And they listen. Now, as a priest, I love you all, but I will politely decline any request to perform an exorcism. <laughs> this is the sort of thing that we don't like because it, it hits us in some fantastic way. We love the lame can walk stuff, but when we really start to talk about evil, it makes us uncomfortable. It's difficult for us to really grab on to this idea, but I think that we have to wrestle with what Jesus is really doing in this passage, what Mark really wants us to know about who Jesus is at his core. And it got me thinking of what happened just a few nights ago here in the church. On Thursday night, more than 800 people gathered in this church to listen to an interfaith panel. I was joined by a rabbi and an imam, and we just kind of talked, and people watched us talk. And the talking took a turn at one point toward what I thought was a very interesting question. What is the biggest problem facing Dallas and the world? And what does your tradition say about it? Now, there are lots of things that I thought that we could answer. But in each of our varied ways, each person on the panel addressed the reality that God has called us into some kind of transformative act. We may disagree on exactly how that happens, but fundamentally, God is calling us to help transform the world and transform the world from what? And when you really break it down and kind of slough off the high theology, it comes down to just what is happening in today's gospel lesson. There is evil in the world. There is bad, heartbreak, pain. And what God is calling us into is to be transformative instruments for the good with God's help 
to take the bad and to turn it into something good. That evil is something that we are called to witness to. Because just like Jesus in this passage, evil knows the power of God. Evil knows the power, the Christ in us. And when we bear witness to the hopefulness and the power and the authority of Christ in the world, we can actually become transformative agents for good. Now, we often hear, and Christianity is no exception, faith leaders turn whatever kind of call to transformation that they receive into something that becomes judgmental and exclusive and often ugly. And I think Christianity certainly has its, its hills to climb or its hurdles to jump because out there in the world, what most people hear about Christianity is that kind of judgmentalism. And so I was really struck by the people who came up to me after Thursday night's program. Person after person, including multiple family groups, had come Thursday night to this church from exotic places like McKinney. <laughs> and they had come here and they told me afterwards that they had not been able to find a church that they really liked. They'd not been able to find a church near them in their neighborhoods that professed this generous orthodoxy, this inclusive, abundant love that they see in the Bible. What they were finding near them was something very closed. And yet here in this place, they heard that real message of Christ that is an invitation to everyone, that is based on radical, abundant love, nothing that is lacking, that God is bigger than anything we could ever hope for and imagine, and God is calling all of us into that transformative power. And they said to me, we think we found a church we want to be a part of, and we're going to come on Sunday. That amazed me that still, what people see in this world of Christianity is so small and finite that it has lost its power to inspire. And perhaps that's really what Mark is getting at in this gospel lesson. Yes, it manifests itself as an exorcism. And yes, we don't really know about that sort of thing tangibly like it happens here. But perhaps what Mark is really getting at what we are still being invited into is to claim and proclaim the authority of Christ, the abundant nature of God through Christ, and not just to like that idea, not just to make it feel good to us, but to remember that there are far too many people out in the world who have lost that kind of inspirational moment, who cannot find a church community that claims God's largesse and grace. But St. Michael can be that beacon of hope. We can be that light in the darkness. We can be confident that the faith we have in Christ here is generous and open and loving and invitational and can bring people together and not just for the good of more people, but to actually transform this world into the world that God has dreamed of, to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven here and now, not just something in the future, some pipe dream or other place that we have to wait to die to go to, but instead heaven can be now. We can be agents and instruments of that hopefulness and that love to continue to transform the world. Today, Mark gets his gospel going by finding evil and casting it out. And perhaps we, here at St. Michael, can claim and proclaim Christ's authority in new ways that will continue to drive out that evil and welcome in the good, and in doing so, inspire those around us. Amen.